is Jelly Roll, an American rapper who broke records with his singles Need a Favor, the guy when I need a favor. and Son of a Sinner. Son of a sinner. the latter of which won three CMT Music Awards. Before all that, Jelly Roll was just a kid lost in the shadows of Nashville, spending eight years in jail between the ages of 14 and 26, which broke him even more. What challenges did he overcome to become the man we know today? What was his secret for pushing through 15 years without a clear win? This is the story of the legendary Jelly Roll. In 1984, Jason DeFord was born into a family already settled in Nashville, Tennessee. This area was known for its vibrant mix of country music, hip-hop, and other diverse genres. Jelly Roll, his nickname was given to him by his family and friends, and he was the youngest of their children. His father, Horace DeFord, worked as a meat salesman and moonlighted as a bookie, described as a party animal who thrived on a lively social life, but he also engaged in gambling, which unfortunately contributed to the family's financial instability. Jason's mother, Diane DeFord, battled significant mental illness and struggled with cocaine addiction. She often remained isolated in her room, but music provided a solace she embraced wholeheartedly. Diane's love for music had a profound impact on Jason, nurturing his own musical interest and shaping his artistic path. This passion for music became a driving force in his career, preventing him from abandoning his dreams, even when weighed against his love for his mother. Uh, I grew up to a really blue-collar, hard-working father. He was a Meat salesman. He ran a meat company called D Ford Wholesale Meats. I'm a D Ford host. Um, he also booked bets on the side, so he taught me about that nonstop hustle, baby. My mother, when I was younger, she's a way better now, but she struggled with like mental health and addictions. Jason's childhood in Antioch, a neighborhood notorious for poverty and the most limited opportunities in Nashville, further exposed him to a harsh reality. Surrounded by drug dealers and bars on every corner, the only figures of success he encountered were often involved in risky and illegal activities. These combined circumstances, including his family environment and the people around him undoubtedly influenced his early choices, leading him to engage in risky behaviors like underage drinking, substance use, and involvement in criminal activities. Horrible. We robbed a couple of guys for some weed, but they called the police because we took some money and some stuff, and it was, it was an armed robbery. I mean, we went in there with a gun. I regret it every day of my life, Joe. You know, I mean, I, I was a kid. Now, I'm not making an excuse, but I would like to paint the picture that I literally did not have pubic hairs. I'm a 15-year-old kid when it happens, you know? At the age of 14, he made a decision that he would spend the next 12 years of his life in what we call the revolving door of the judicial system. He did nine out of those 12 years in and out of jail. The biggest event when Jelly was young is the juvenile charge, and by the grace of God, thankfully, nobody got hurt. He was a 15, 16-year-old child, charged with four years in jail. During that time, he was charged as an adult. He missed all of his high school years. He didn't get his GD until he was in jail the third or fourth time of his 20s. So, you're like, what else do you do by then? You're kind of driven to the streets. In one of the rotational forms, one of the times he was out, he had gotten a young woman pregnant. And this was his Damascus Road experience. On May 22, 2008, he was at the Correction Corporations of America. He was in cell 223, and he'd been in a thousand cells. But he remembers this one for this reason. They knocked on that cell door and told him he had a daughter. That day, his daughter was born. And he was like, I'm gonna go home and do anything I can not to risk my freedom to provide for this child and he came home and started the journey. There was a time in my life where I truly thought this was it. Mm. This was your future. Yeah, and then coming here, you know, just after getting nominated for two Grammys, it just hits different. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just... He was living in his van, practically broke, when he met her. She was a Vegas girl working, and she has a penthouse condo and two sports cars. They met at a show where she came to one of his performances. She was with an abusive boyfriend at the time. He sensed that the guy was abusing her. After a while, they split, and she took her own life. He noticed she was playing with his DMs. Now, with mutual friends, she asked him to connect her with Jelly. He reached out to her, expressing his interest in coming out to shoot some video content, and she agreed. On 
the first night, he slept on the couch, and on the second night, he slept in her bed. Eventually, they got married in a random manner. During a Yellow Wolf Deftones concert in Vegas, he proposed on stage, and they decided to get married right away. It was around 11 o'clock, and they rushed to the courthouse, making the decision before midnight. Vegas is famous for such spontaneous decisions. Despite the quick decision, they listened to Bruno Mars's music on the way there. She supported him and played a significant role in boosting his music career. Having someone to support and reassure him was crucial. She not only provided emotional support, but also helped him financially. Before transitioning into country music, Jelly Roll launched his career in hip-hop. Inspired by rappers such as 3-6 Mafia, UGK, and 8-Ball and MJG, he sold mixtapes out of his car, starting with a string of releases from his first project, The Plain Schmear Tape, in 2003, followed by the four-part Gamblin' on the White Boy series from 2004 to 2011. During this time, he didn't experience much success. He was performing for less than $1,000 per show, barely able to afford to eat. However, he kept going step after another, and in 2010, his collaboration Pop Another Pill with Memphis rapper Lil White reached over 6.3 million on YouTube. At that point, you could feel in Jelly's songs how much he was struggling, how much he thought he had fallen in life. But this gave him the light he was searching for, realizing that there were people on the other side of the planet who wanted to listen to his music. On July 7, 2022, one of Jelly's biggest dreams happened. He was invited by country singer Craig Morgan to join him on stage at the Opry to perform Almost Home. After that, Jelly started hitting success after success. He scored his first number one on rock radio with the track Dead Man Walking and his first number one song on country radio with his debut country single, Son of a Sinner. He made history with a record-breaking 25th week at number one on Billboard's Emerging Artists chart. There is something poetic about a 39-year-old man winning New Artist of the Year. I don't know where you're at in your life or what you're going through, but I want to tell you to keep Keep going, baby. I want to tell you success is on the other side of it. I want to tell you it's going to be okay. I want to tell you that the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror for a reason. Because what's in front of you is so much more important than what's behind you. Let's party, Nashville! Now Jelly Roll is known internationally for his songs. His daughter is now 16 years old, and he also had a new child with Bunny in 2016. His latest achievement was at the 2023 CMT Music Awards, where Jelly Roll won Male Video of the Year, Male Breakthrough Video of the Year, and Digital First Performance of the Year, all for the song Son of a Sinner. Also, in November 2023, Jelly Roll won the award for New Artist of the Year at the 57th Annual Country Music Association Awards. Despite all the changes and successes he has had, to this day, he's a 39-year-old man. He recently turned down a house because the community wouldn't let him be a part of the golf course due to his felonies. Can you imagine changing your life in such a way that you can afford a house in that community, but they won't let you in just because of your past mistakes? 